Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the iOmega Jazz Drive. Now the Jazz Drive was the big brother to their Zip Drive. Unlike the Zip Drive that used a floppy disk media in it, this used a hard disk media inside of it. It was larger capacity, faster, more expensive, geared more towards professionals. Now I've been wanting to do a video on the Jazz Drive with the iPhone for quite some time. Sort of a companion piece to the Zip Drive one I did a few months ago. But the iOmega Jazz Drive was only available as a SCSI device. They never made a USB version of the Jazz Drive, which kind of makes sense because, again, it was geared at professionals, Mac people that have, were doing graphics, video, audio that needed to back up large files, as well as IT professionals and data centers that had servers with SCSI ports on them. But they did eventually, iMega did eventually make a USB adapter for these. And these adapters are like $200 on eBay used, sometimes more. It's ridiculous. You can get a working jazz drive, cartridge, all the cables and everything for under 50 bucks. And the adapter is over 200 It's It's just really crazy. So I just kind of uh, forgot about it. I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. And then a few months later, I learned about the Orb Drive. And I go on eBay to look at those. And I found one new in box with a USB adapter in it, like, in my la like I showed off in my last video, and I got that for $50. So not only did I get a new device that I could do a new video on, I got a SCSI to USB adapter that we might be able to use elsewhere. So once I realized with the Orb drive that it didn't need any drivers and would work fine on the iPhone, I thought, okay, it's worth the risk. Let's just spend the 50 bucks and get a jazz drive in and see if the SCSI adapter, SCSI to USB adapter I got with the Orb drive will work on the jazz drive. So I get it in and the first thing I always do with any of these new devices is I plug it into my Mac first, make sure everything's working and then work my way down to the iPhone. So I plug this in to my Mac and it doesn't work. Like nothing comes up and I'm like, oh crap, what's this mean? Is the adapter not gonna work on the jazz drive? Is the jazz drive bad? Is the disc drive bad? I didn't have an old SCSI Mac here to test it with as a control group. So I was getting worried and then I remembered something in the Orb Drive manual. It said if you're going to use the adapter on a Mac, you have to set the SCSI ID to zero. So what's a SCSI ID? Well, for those of you who are not familiar with SCSI, it was a transfer cable that was kind of like USB in a sense that you could plug multiple USB devices into a hub. Uh, with SCSI, you could daisy chain several devices through an in and out port on the back of it. So you could plug in this to your computer and then you could plug this into another device and so on and so on. And the SCSI, uh, the SCSI allowed you to put seven devices on the chain and the eighth device was the um, computer itself. So the, it's, the numbering started with zero, so it was zero through seven. So seven was the computer and then zero, su zero through six was the numbers that you could assign the different devices on your SCSI chain. And most of them had a little meter like this where you could change the number. Some of them were cruder and you had to, they were like a little dial and you had to use a screwdriver to change them. But, but most of them were like this and you could just put a little pin in here and change the number. So every device on your SCSI chain had to be a unique number, otherwise you'd have a conflict. So I have no idea why it has to be set to zero specifically on a Mac when you use the USB adapter. Hopefully someone with more knowledge on this could uh, put the answer in the in the comments below but once i set this to zero it worked perfectly fine so let me get this set up i'll be right back and we'll see if it works on the iphone okay and we're back so i've got everything hooked up now i've got the SCSI to usb adapter plugged in the back here got my phone ready to go ac adapters plugged into the jazz drive let's put the disc in turn it on Take the USB cord, plug it into the USB adapter here on the phone. There it is. So, like I, uh, if you've watched my previous video on the Orb Drive, you know that the adapter is a USB 1.1 device. 
So it really, really slows down the speed of these SCSI devices. So again, this is not indicative of the true speed of a jazz drive, just the ability to connect it to an iPhone. So I've got some pictures on here. Still a little sluggish with that USB 1 adapter, and the phone itself is, I found, is not that great at previewing stuff off of external USB devices. Here's a little uh, seasonal music. We will uh, let that cache for a second. So maybe there is a USB 2 to SCSI adapter. I'll have to look into that. Um, it's probably $400 on eBay. They are just ridiculously priced. I guess there's just not a lot of them out there. Can you hear that over the jazz drive? Okay, let's make sure we have write access as well. On my phone here I have the uh, PDF or the user's guide for the Jazz. I'll copy that down to the Jazz drive. And then let's take a look. Yep, that is the user's guide. All right, works perfectly fine, just as expected. So, a couple of things. One is I really wanted to end this video by bringing the orb drive back out, hooking it up to the jazz drive over a SCSI cable and having both of them go out over the USB adapter. But because both of them have to be set to zero to work, I can't put two items on the SCSI chain with the same identifier. So unfortunately, as long as we're using the USB adapter it looks like it's going to be one device at a time only. But it does, the good news is that it does work cross manufacturer. This was not some kind of proprietary adapter for the Orb Drive. I didn't think it was. It was made by Shuttle Technologies and then just branded Castlewood with a sticker. But it's very good to know that it is able to go across different manufacturers of SCSI devices because that opens up some interesting possibilities that we're going to look at in the new year. I hope you are enjoying this series. If you are, please like and subscribe. I'm going to have some, I'm going to have a big 2020. I'm going to do some more retro machines. We're going to do some contemporary items as well. So I've got lots of plans for it. So if you're interested, please uh, subscribe. Uh, but that's all for now. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.